afternoon, folks. It's Bob out here at Serenity Hill. As you can see behind me, that's the kitchen wall, little kitchen door. I've got that fit, the cordwood uh, at the top of the wall finished up. I've got the OSB in to cover the roof. See, I got one that's missed, not cover the roof, or cover the windows, rather. And today I went ahead and finished up the cordwood all the way up to the top of the entry door, the living room door. And um, I also have completed the cordwood along the top of the, the uh, living room walls. You can see that, that area there that was, was open. You can see where it's darker, that was open. That's all got insulation all in it and the, the cordwood and then all the way across the top and then up above. So what that means is I am now, I am now out of the cordwood business until spring. So I, uh, I'm officially, I'm officially retiring my mortars, my cut points for in, until springtime. And now it's time to uh, continue on with the, with the rest of, uh, of things. Um, I've got some concrete pavers on the ground here, just kind of mocking up. Um, that's going to be the base that the uh, that the wood stove will rest on. I've got to put them over on the living room wall, but I got to clear that out first. Um, I've been busy buying stuff, Menards, uh, since uh, the team, the NASCAR team that Paul Menard sponsors, won the championship. Last 12 days of December, they decided to have a 12% rebate. So I've been buying stuff, and one of the things I bought this is the paneling um, that Deb really liked that we're going to be putting in the laundry room. And then uh, we're putting a white, like a B board look paneling in the pantry. I bought flooring going with the laminate flooring and um, what we're going with is called a spring birch you see it's a lighter flooring but it's got it looks kind of like a spalted wood if you know what spalted is but it's got some uh, light brown and then some medium browns and then it's got some black streaks through it so we thought that would go well with uh, with other things and that's just a laminate flooring with an attached pad on the back so that won't take long to put down. And uh, I also went to a local uh, a local mill and bought uh, the first stack of tongue and groove siding. Now it's a pretty good deal. I I bought um, I went in there with 400 cash and I walked came out with uh, 62 pieces of car siding six inch and they got the, the tongue and groove siding so it's got the little v groove in it but what i got is what they call blue stain pine and i don't know if it shows up too well or not but you can see all the little marks in it and uh, it's got kind of some blue staining in some of it some of it more than others some of it's almost clear We really like the blue stain uh, pine. And it's a naturally occurring thing. Um, when the bark beetles get to the pine trees, uh, the little tunnels that they bore into it allows this fungus to get in and attack it. And when that fungus attacks the pine, it stains it kind of a bluish gray or a, a blackish blue color. And um, you don't know if you got blue stain or not till you start cutting boards from it. So that's what we got, and that's going to go here in the in the bathroom. Uh, that's just the first batch of it. I'll be going back for more. Um, I've got my plumbing rough out done in the bathroom for my shower. I got the mixing valve hot on the left, cold on the right. And got the the fix fitting for the uh, shower head there. Um, I also.
also put in some blocking in the wall here. You see that little uh, stool, that's a little bench in the corner that'll be covered with cement board and tile. I'll be anchoring that to the floor. And then uh, I just built a mock up to make sure it didn't look like it. And then I've got blocking in here on either side. And what this is, is that's where, this is where um, I'll be attaching um, the grab rigs. Now, the seat height on this is 19 inches above the floor, which is, um, let's see, the, the ADA code calls for 17 to 19 inches. Deb likes over taller, so it's 19 inches. So it, it, it will be 19 inches above the finished floor once the tile is in. So that's ADA compliant. The grab bars um, are going to be 36 inches off the floor, which is right in the ADA compliant range. Compliance range. And then uh, I also went ahead and put blocking for a towel bar. So that means when I put the my towel bars and my grab bars and everything in, instead of being anchored to the cement board or whatever um, and having to look for a stud, I've actually got two by four blocking that's tied into my into the studs that that will fasten to it. Another thing that I've done here is is um, I'm putting in some built-in shelves. Now this is just two by four, um, and I've brought it in half inch from the back edge of the studs here, and that way I'll have room for my cement board behind it. And then, of course, there'll be tongue and groove siding on the back side of it. But these are sized, uh, one on the left and one on the right. And these are sized so that they'll be able to hold our bottles of shampoo and body wash and all that. And um, I've got it slanted slightly towards the inside of a shower. So any water that gets on it will be able to drain off uh, instead of sitting there collecting it. So tile all that in so I hate those things that you know hang from your shower bar and they scoot back and forth and all that so we've got a his and hers um, I guess this one's hers it's a little bit bigger um, little nooks shelves built-in shelves to hold all of our all of our toiletries and all that that we need here and uh, and then and the next thing that I'm getting ready to start as soon as I get off here talking to you guys is, um, how do you like my mess? Yeah, this is the room where I've just been tossing things. And you see I've got one part of a wall blocked off. Well, i got a, these open spaces here. I've got to block those off as well. But before I do that, I'm going to clean up this mess. So uh, I'm figuring that will take me the rest of the day to do that. And then I'll put the OSB up and we'll have this uh, closed off so we can start uh, keeping it warm, warmer in here for working. And, uh, and I'll be able to, uh, to start in on the interior. So that's where we stand right now. Um, right now I'm standing in front of a location where the wood stove is going to go. It'll be sitting right in here. And then there'll be this column just off to the side of it. And then next to it, it will be the bookshelf. I know you can't see the bookshelf because right now my entry door is covering it. Um, and I think uh, I'm going to get my, my uh, I'll get my pad and the, the heat proof backing and tile put on the wall here. And then I'm going to go pick up my wood, my wood stove. That way I can bring it home and not have to move and put it in place and not have to move it again. So, yeah, I, I like it a lot better having the, sorry for the washout, having that uh, cordwood finished all the way across the top. Right here I've got another one of my base cabinets. This one will be going to the uh, right-hand, yeah, right-hand side of the stove. And uh, I've just built the frame, uh, uh, there, I used one store-bought two-by-four on this. The rest of it is all cutoffs uh, that I had. And the inside is painted white. 
the reason this panel is painted white is this is going to butt up against another cabinet, and this panel that's the outside of one cabinet is the inside of another one. So uh, it's painted white, and then inside painted white, and then what I'll do is when I put the, I'll mill my oak and, and put the face frame on it, and this side of it um, will won't have a shelf, and this side I put a shelf about midway, and that way we can like make a little divider and s s we can slide our cookie sheets in here and not have to jumble them all the time. And then there'll be a drawer, a full width drawer across here, and that drawer will be uh, 20, 27 inches wide. And so there'll be one of these on either side of the on either side of the stove. So I have a pretty good sized working room on either side of the stove. The reason why that back is high is I've got a piece of, uh, I got some inch and a half and two and a half inch oak slabs um, that are, let's see, I got a couple of them that are over 20 inches wide. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, smooth, uh, smooth one of those down. And it's about nine foot long. And that will make me a nice top to go on top of that that upper piece I showed you. That's that's where it'll be resting. Um, and that way also, that'll be a bar that people can sit at from the dining room. They can sit there, but they can do nothing from the top and they can have a nice little seat to just sit on. So I'll protect kids that way and have a nice live edge oak slab with a nice finish on it. As the uh, as the bar, so that's where we we are. I, I'm like I said. I'm, I've got. Uh, let's see. When I put those OSB pieces in the guest room to close those walls off, which um, I'll be finishing those up in the spring. Right now, I don't have. Um, I don't have enough dried uh, wood to finish it. And going on borrowed time here today I'm wearing just a sweat sh uh, uh, flannel shirt and I'm actually sweating because it's uh, a little over 60 degrees and the wind is calm but uh, starting about I think Wednesday or Thursday next week we're going to start getting some some temps down in the in the 20s and it's going to be cold at night for this will this will get all my the mortar that I just did. It'll give it enough time to dry up enough, and especially with it being inside, and I can protect it so I don't have to worry about it being affected by the cold weather. Um, you know, I can't complain too much. Last year, um, just a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, I was out of the cordwood business because it was so cold last year, and we had so many days. We had several days where you know days in a row. Um, the daytime highs were in the 20s, and it was down in the low teens at night. And here it is this year. We've got, um, like I said, today it's over 60. It's going to be over 60 for the high the next two days. We're going to have a, a, a Christmas that's going to be supposed to be a high of 61 degrees. So it's um, it's allowing me to, to work a lot longer and not be as miserable and let me do, do more cordwood to finish up. Uh, basically, I've got all the cordwood done on the inside of the house that I need to get done so I can I won't be having to drag mortar in and all over floors and furniture and everything like that so I felt pretty good about that that was one of the things I really really wanted to get done um, I was hoping to have all these uh, windows put in up above but um, things just haven't but um, no big deal. We just kind of roll with whatever happens. Um, like I said, I got a, I've got two windows in the kitchen that I haven't blocked off yet. That's because, in in my wisdom, I stacked. Uh, I bought like 20, she 20 sheets, something like that, of of uh, half inch OSB, and I leaned them up against the wall there. And covered them with the tarp, you know, standing on edge with the tarp against the tarp. So I didn't have room to get my uh, my scaffold in. And 
that's what I'm using to do these windows. I, I, I started out using the, uh, a board, a two by 12, between two ladders as a scaffold, but it was kind of sketchy in here in front. Um, it just, uh, I'd have been working up over my head trying to balance on that. But uh, you know, this is crazy. I've got two sets of scaffolding I bought from Harbor Freight. Um, they're a stackable, so I just stack them in that way. I've got me a, a nice um, stable work surface. It's about, I don't know, almost four foot, about three and a half foot by five foot wide, um, three and a half deep by five foot wide that, that I can stand on. It's a lot more stable than the board bouncing between two ladders. Um, so I set that up and that's what I, what I worked with that way. And then I couldn't get the scaffold up there so I just used this other stuff. So I've got the, the OSB cut, I get the screws in it so I can just slide those in place, drive the screws home and, and that'll be placed. And, um, someone was asking, well, what are you going to do on the inside here? Because you've got that, uh, you can see up there the house wrap and what I'll what I'm gonna do is my my plan initially with all of that was uh, these holes need all all the studs in at 16 inch intervals so I can just put regular uh, insulation in there I'll put the insulation in and we'll then put uh, tongue and groove siding over it so I will go ahead and do that and that way I'll have that space insulated and trimmed So off we go. So that's where I am right now. I've got things to the point where where I'm starting to work on the inside. But unfortunately, one of the things I got to do before I work on the inside is um, I got to clean up because uh, like that that rumor was showing me that guest what's going to be the guest bedroom um, in typical true guest bedroom fashion. I've just been dumping stuff in there, and so it's kind of a mess. And so I got Part of the reason I got it cleared out is my sister has a uh, has a vanity uh, with a with a folding mirror, you know, a trifold mirror, um, and a shiffle runner. Well, that's what we've always called it. That was originally at my grandma's house, my grandma Gallimore's house, and she gave it to my mom and dad years and years ago. When, gosh, when my Back when I was in probably junior high school uh, or high school, they gave it to us, and then um, it had several coats of paint on it. Dad stripped the paint off and painted it white, and he actually put little gold trim around it, and it's really nice of a, of a matte white or a satin white. And in the big rooms and all, it's a nice looking color. And then uh, when my sister moved out, I, she ended up, and my dad moved to uh, from Illinois back to Missouri, and he wanted to get rid of it so she could have it. And she and her husband had it refinished, so it's just a really nice wood, um, or a uh, nice brown oak, you know, finish on it. It looks really, really nice. So she's got that stuffed away in a room at her house, and she's been wanting to get rid of it. And she's been asking me, she said, "When are you going to close it?" And I said, "As soon as I get that room closed off." safe from the elements and that way I've got um, someone else gave me a bed frame and a headboard and now I've got these other two pieces of furniture in there so I don't have to buy that furniture for uh, for the guest room I've even got a got a mattress in it so uh, I'll have a fully furnished uh, guest bedroom without having to spend any money on stuff so that's a good deal right all right just wanted to catch you up on where we are thanks for stopping by and joining us uh, you know, don't be afraid to get out there and do something that you've never done before. You know, there is nothing quite as satisfying as sitting back and relaxing for a few minutes and just looking around at work that you've done or whatever. 
yeah, I did that. It's a good feeling. So get out there and do something. Try something you've never done before and uh, make things happen. This is Bob from Sorrenti Hill. Thanks for stopping by, and we will see you on the next one. Bye now.